Greetings, Cyclopians. Welcome to Cyclops Podcast 26, brought to you by H.P. Lovecraft's The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, or Kadath. Not never sure if that's easy names. Never takes easy names. No, he doesn't. My name is Steve. <laughs> never <laughs> Tom. The dream, the dream Quest of Unknown Steve. <laughs> Bob's Dream Quest. Right? Come on, man. <laughs> anyway, um, we've got. We're gonna open right up here with Tom's comic book news. Uh, I actually got five this week because I have an extra one. I have two from DC, two from Marvel, and one from Titan. Uh, we'll start off with DC. Uh, Superman number twenty. Uh, ever since the rebirth, I had everything DC has been doing really has been firing on all cylinders, and Superman in particular has had a noticeable uptick in terms of quality. Um, this storyline picks up after the sort of t- uh, two or three parter with Mister Mixelplick, who turns out to have been the mysterious other Clark Kent, and uh, they actually give a, a pretty good backstory as to why Mixelplick was posing as Clark Kent and all this. But it resulted basically in the merging of this other Superman and the new 52 Superman into a single being along with Lois Lane. And it looks like this is going to start to explore the fallout of the two of them getting merged together as well as uh, Superman's son and why his powers haven't fully manifested yet. They're only fluctuating here and there. Uh, So this is a fun setup issue to a new storyline. It's called uh, Black Dawn that they're going to be working on. The only thing I really didn't like about this issue is Batman guest stars, and Batman has a tendency to, when he's written outside of his own material, just come off as a horrible, horrible person. Like, why would anybody ever partner with this guy? He's such a jerk. (laughs) And even in Batman's own stuff in the New 52, you're like, my god, how is somebody, one of your friends just not put a bullet in your head yet? You're such an unreasonable, unlikable jerk. And uh, luckily, in, in the Rebirth stuff, they've gotten way better about that. Batman is much more likable as a person. and But here we go. In this one, he just comes off as like, my God, I hate you. <laughs> That's hysterical. So hopefully that doesn't that trend doesn't continue. But other than that, this was a fun setup issue. And it looks like uh, Superman, out of the two Superman and Action Comics, uh, is going to be really exploring the Kent family aspect of su- Superman's life. So I like that one. Uh, moving on to Batman himself in Batman number 20. In this one, like I said, Batman doesn't come off as such an unlikable jerk. He comes off as a much more likable person. But this is the conclusion to the... After counseling and support groups. Yeah, right? After his many, many psychotherapy visits. a chocolate visits. shake. Uh, this is the conclusion to the I Am Bane storyline, or at least I believe it's the conclusion to the I Am Bane storyline. Uh, Bane has worked his way through Arkham Asylum you know, just crushing everything in his way to get to Batman. He's just an unstoppable wrecking machine. And the issue is narrated by somebody, I won't give away who, but uh, you're watching the fight between Batman and Bane, and I mean, Batman is just getting this, like, a rag doll by Bane, just kick the crap out of him. And it's a fun look at, at uh, initially, the you know, not just the fight, but you also see why Batman is the way he is, okay. you know, and how he got here, and what makes him keep going even when... You know, he's just a man, and he should have been dead years ago. Yep. Um, so without giving too much away here, Batman obviously doesn't get beaten to death by Bane. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be kind of the end of the series there. So, but I really like this. This was a fun way to make Bane relevant again and terrifying. Because, like he said, he mows through every villain pretty much in Batman's rogues gallery to get to Batman. And it was a great uh, storyline. And, it, again, it really it, it makes Batman... Uh, more human and relatable in a lot of ways than he ever was in the New 52 where he was just like, I hate you. You're right. Batman did evolve into this bitter, miserable, yeah, dark... Yeah, I don't know was, when it happened. It was like... Did like, you notice it too? Because yeah, when I grew up with Batman, he was late, like this kind of superhero but he wasn't He was miserable. dark, but yeah, he was never like... Not in the 60s he wasn't. God, I didn't yeah, grow up in the 60s. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember the da 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 Batman. That was like, you know, this this almost very light, lightweight yeah. Batman. Adam West, but one of the best Batmans ever. Yeah, but like him. somewhere in the 2000s, <laughs> he just morphed into this like unlikable... Yeah, jerk, I you know, think like, that was Dark Knight. Wow. Wasn't it Dark Knight that did that? No, in the, in the Dark Knight movies, you mean the movies or the comic? Because the, the, there's two. The movies, because he became very... He became dark in the movies, but never in the movies yeah. that I look at him and go... It was the one he burned down his, his, his whole... Was that 
Could no, we burned down the. He um, didn't burn his house down. Someone burned. He was in it when someone burned it down. The whole thing went to pieces. He threw everybody out, and he was trying to put this attitude he'll cost that he. Oh, yeah, he buddy. threw everybody out because Roswell Gould was in the house. Yeah, and he, was and he didn't want to... anybody to get caught in the crossfire. Right, and I, th- I thought was, but I mean, he was also coming across at that point with that bitter, miserable attitude of. I don't know. You're right, though. He did. Yeah, he, he did kind of. Yeah. Evolve into this dark thing, and I wonder. And if... Rebirth has steered him away. From... He's still dark, but it's not like. To the point where, how does anybody partner with you ever? Yeah, <laughs> which is is a great question. It's a, where does Nightwing come in? Or, yeah, that's the Grayson? thing. Like, yeah, that's the thing. Everybody leaves him eventually. Nightwing yeah. was like, I can't handle you anymore. Yeah. Red Hood, you You're know, too depressed. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, Alfred must be taking like a lot of like Valium or something to keep himself <laughs> super Alfred. chill. Alfred knows how to how to yeah. the line. Isn't the whole <laughs> whole storylines on Alfred just nothing yeah. but Alfred? And those are actually a lot of fun. Yeah, Alfred was they did a great what if where Alfred turned out to be the Joker. It was an alternate universe. Oh, that's cool. But it was fun. Um, so hopping uh, to the other side of the fence here with Marvel, we have Captain America, Steve Rogers, number fifteen. Uh, Secret Empire is going to be dropping pretty soon. It's the next big Marvel event, and this this is really setting the storyline for that where uh, Steve is quietly behind the scenes building up his own hydra army and task force to and now he's director of shield so he's worming his way into every aspect of you know this the superhero and government community as far as he can uh but his one problem right now is he has to deal with the red skull yep. who is also you know in right now in control of hydra that's a problem that is a problem now the only thing is if you haven't been reading uncanny avengers there's a really big plot point they go through and they they kind of gloss through it in the first like two pages and you're like what when did that happen um after that though the story kicks into a much much better um flow and we get to see steve interacting with the red skull also in the flashbacks during world war ii and you know how he he comes to have this you know even though he's now a hydra agent he still hates the red skull yep um and so we get a, a big final showdown between the two here and steve you know firmly sets himself in place for the secret empire mm-hmm. event so i i'm really looking forward to secret empire i think that's going to be a lot of fun and you know finally having everybody come to realize that steve is now a hydra agent this whole time too cool and uh we'll have to see I how that say plays it out too that I hope I can get a copy of this cover put up or a link to it because I would put that cover as a poster on my wall. That's a great. great yeah, it's cover. a really nice Who cover. Who did that cover? Do you know? Uh, let's take a quick peek. It's a, it's, a, it's just a, this is the main cover. I'm hoping we'll have a link to it. You know, as we're talking right now, it's just a it's a beautiful Nick cover. Artists, Red and fire and Captain cover. America's beast. Gabrielle Del Otto. Gabrielle Del Otto. Okay, we'll check her out later. We'll keep. Yeah, that's a really nice that's cover. A, that's a beauty. And my last Marvel one, and this was actually uh, probably my favorite comic to come out this week, uh, X-Men Gold number one. Now, after uh, Extraordinary X-Men and Uncanny X-Men ended, uh, X-Men have gotten a crap load of new titles. There's going to be X-Men Gold, X-Men Blue, Weapon X, uh, I think Generation X is going to get a comic, Iceman Cable, yeah. you know, so it's like X-Men galore. And it's hilarious because I think it was in the 90s, the mid-90s, that X-Men actually was originally split into uh, two teams, Gold and Blue, just like it is now. Because there were so many X-Men characters, they had to split them into two comics. And uh, X-Men Blue, it looks like, is going to be that time-displaced team from the 60s of the original uh, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Beast, Angel, and Iceman. Uh, And this team lineup is Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, Old Man Logan... Uh, I think her name, yeah, Prestige, and Kitty Pride is leading the team. Um, this was, in many ways, I think, a classic return to form for X-Men. This, it, it, it opens with that classic Professor X line from the 60s, to me, my X-Men. Yep. And it, I, that, that right there is, like, awesome, and it set the tone for the entire comic. Awesome. This was the X-Men getting back to their glory days. Do you feel like they're coming back after all the complaining last year? Yeah, I really do. That's that's, that's really what this whole issue was, is is the X-Men are back to being what they were, heroes. Great. Big return to form here. I mean, they for the most part, they're wearing their classic costumes from, from their original debut, Colossus, Nightcrawler, and Storm. All have the, like their original costumes from when they debuted in Giant Size X Men number one. Awesome, and which is great because the three of them debuted together in that Giant Size X Men, mm-hmm. um, and Wolverine was brought in too there. But obviously, this is Old Man Logan, so his costume's you know different. He's just got a trench coat and jeans, but <laughs> still, uh, this was great. This was the X Men dealing with their return to the world in a post you know Terrigian world. Kitty's trying to 
to you know get used to the fact that now everything X Men related is falling on her shoulders because she's leading not just this team but the X Men as a whole. And you know we're setting up some new storylines for X uh, without giving anything away too much. There the X Men come up against the classic, uh, well a new twist on a classic uh, foe they've faced before, and. Really, all I can say about this is this feels like classic X Men, cool. and in the best way possible. You know, you the you have a great dynamic with an older Wolverine who's now this gruff, grumpy old man. Mm-hmm. You know, he has to deal with all you know. Been hanging out with Batman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can give Batman pointers on being depressed. So miserable. Um, the only negative here, and it's not even really a negative; it's more like a nitpicky thing, is the one of the new additions to the team, uh, Prestige is a character you wouldn't be familiar with at all unless you've been reading one. Uncanny X-Men. Yep. And that's that's just a nitpicky thing. It's like one of those things where a new reader might not get it. I luckily had read Uncanny X-Men, so I, I picked up on it pretty quick. But really, this was great, and I can't wait to keep reading X-Men Gold. And is that it for, for comics? I have got one more. more. Oh, the last cool. one okay. I have uh, by Titan Comics is great. Penny Dreadful uh, Number 1. Uh, this is technically number one on a new miniseries. Um, Penny Dreadful is one of my favorite TV shows. It's uh, basically uh, if Frankenstein, Wolfman, uh, the Mummy, and all this, all the classic Universal monsters, all existed at the same time in the same TV show universe. Yep. And you know, it was created by uh, I think his name was John Logan or Tom John. Lo- yeah, John Logan, I think. John Logan. And um, it was a great. It was on Showtime. It ran for three seasons. Fantastic. Uh, it ended last year, I believe, and I was I was bummed because at the one hand they ended at a great point, but you know I, there was so much more I would like to see, and they they kind of left the, some plot points open if they did get renewed for a season four, and that's what this is. The they initially did a comic that picks up in a gap between episodes in season one. Cool. This one picks right up after the show ends. It's been six months. You know we're dealing with the fallout of uh, a character's death. I don't want to give anything away in case anyone hasn't seen the show. But the, the best thing I can um, uh, give this is that it feels exactly like the TV show. This doesn't feel like somebody taking the Penny Dreadful world and then doing their own thing with it. This really feels like this was basically season one, or, uh, episode one on season four of Penny Dreadful. Okay. Everything feels like it should. Uh, it's got the same kind of creepy, dark vibe to it. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't. I'm not sure if this one's going to be a mini series or uh, just an ongoing. Probably, I would say probably a mini series. I'm thinking this is going to do well too. I've seen a lot of Penny Dreadful on the sites. Um, a lot of, a lot of um, sci-fi fantasy or, fa- or pardon me, horror, horror sites yeah. talking talking Penny Dreadful. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty popular. it was a great show, and um, it does pick up on one of the plot points they set up in season three that they th- had left open for uh, in case of a season four. And it was really, it was really great. Uh, is the it's related to the mummy, and they but they put their own unique spin on it, like they do on most things on the show. So I am really looking forward to this, and I I can't wait. And uh, it's a great way. I think comics have now kind of become a way to continue shows. Cool. That either get canceled too soon, or you know they just have stuff to do with still. Like Angel and Buffy are still going in comics. Cool. Yeah, and they're great. And Buffy, Buffy's having a little reunion. Yeah, they had the up. they had the big reunion. Uh, so that's kind of cool too. Now that's all I got. Uh, that's all. I, no, that's fine. <laughs> I just I no. forgot you said five, and then it, then when you saw this, is my favorite, and I I got I got uh, I got a little confused there. Pretty easy for me when I'm mm-hmm. doing twenty things at once over here. Anyway. Uh, the uh, comic I'm going to cover this week is is a, a pretty cool little comic that just came up. It's a it's called Tinkers of the Wasteland. Tinkers of the Wasteland by Raul Trevino. Cool and chickens of the apocalypse. <laughs> cool <laughs> chickens of the apocalypse. And think of a um, a humorous. It's a manga, more or less. Humorous, um, uh, like Mad Max with humor. <laughs> this group in the uh, in the future running around. <laughs> After the apocalypse, the Earth's been hit by a whole bunch of, of uh, asteroids, and what's left is well, not a whole lot. This, these crazy, uh, these crazy societies, and these 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 two guys and this girl are running around in this car and having these adventures in the future. And uh, just to uh, to summarize really quick, it's it's pretty funny. They're up against uh, oh, what's his name? I'm trying to think. I think it's King Queer. <laughs> Queer. And he- <laughs> 
<laughs> he, has, he has this castle with all these like trannies and weirdos and stuff, and it's absolutely hysterical. And in this episode, it, or in this comic, it opens up with these guys trying to. He wants something to eat, and King Queer has all the chickens. And so they're going to try to break into his impregnable fortress to get the chickens. <laughs> Thing. Like it's you like, do. You know, I mean, like, and people are out there thinking, oh, "Wait a minute, where are we going with this?" And it's just, it's crazy. It's a lot of fun. But you know, I read this thing, and I, I really enjoyed it. Actually, it's, it's, it is a lot of fun. It's um. How come the world never ends and people all band together for the common good? It, it <laughs> never ends with you know nobody ever gets along. It's already everybody fighting over the chickens. Now here's the 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 kicker is the chickens have some kind of dark secret that looks like it could doom the earth. The chickens <laughs> have a secret. <laughs> that's why we're talking. Are cool, the chickens sentient? Cool chickens of the apocalypse. Yeah. And that's part of the whole thing here. And and uh, so what we're, what we're trying to do is 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 find out what's going on with these chickens. And, and I don't want to give too much away, but you can bet that they're going to hook up with some chickens because <laughs> there's some chickens on the top of the car that they're racing away from the, you know, it, they're racing away from the castle with King Queer in, in hot pursuit on the cover anyway. And uh, I want to say King Queer, and I'm, oh, gosh, I hope I didn't say that wrong. But anyway, it, it's a great little, it's a great little comic. The, the art is fantastic. It, it, it's only black and white when I'm seeing it right now, but I love it. I love the drawing, the, the illustration. Well, it's funny you mentioned Mad Maxi because, um, Mad Max Fury Road, the newest one, they actually have a cut where the whole thing's in nothing but black and white. Okay. That which is I that seems to be like a thing now. I like black and white. Yeah. And you know the Logan movie is gonna be re released in black and white too. Really? I yeah, don't know what's they're up gonna with do that. that. That's um, a hot trend. Like uh The Walking Dead, the comic, is all black and white. And they originally had shot the pilot in all black and white. But before they changed their mind and decided to go full color. Yeah, I've, I've seen... Who else? Somebody else just announced black and white. They're going to do a black and white thing. I can't think of who it was, but you're right. Black and white is hot right now. And But the, these have always... The mangas have always been black and white, more or less. It, it's yeah. Going way yeah, down. Yeah. So this guy this is a Mexican artist, and he's um you know he's he's and he's storyteller, and he's, he's done this in a manga style. And um, one other thing, too, the asteroids keep coming so they're still coming on, they're still dropping uh, down okay. and wrecking everything and you know of course they're landing in like really you know you know really cool places like right in front of the castle or you know right in front of these guys or whatever and plot it, points yeah and uh. by the way they're in the wasteland in the year 2046 so think of mad max and it's uh the two main characters are splitter and Milla. And uh, they fight like like rabid dogs in this whole thing. They, 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 she can't stand them. And and it, it is King Queer, by the way. He's got the fortress. And you wait to see King Queer. It's like unbelievable. It's, it's pretty darn funny. Like Lord Humongous. Oh, it's it's. Think of um. I almost wonder if if Raúl Trevino didn't get the idea a little bit from Punk in Escape from New York. That's the first thing uh, I thought when okay. I saw that. And I, just, I don't know why I kept thinking about that, Escape from New York. And so this oh, almost yeah, that's, has... That's a classic, you know, yeah, apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic yeah. thing. And so that's why I kept thinking about it. So I, in, in short, I enjoyed the comic. I don't mean, you know, I, I think I've taken all enough time to talk about this comic as you did in <laughs> five. Well, that's good. So it was a lot of fun, and, and I just wanted to throw that out there. And we'll have a link to it, of course, and some images and stuff. What are we, uh, what are we looking at next? Uh, well, I have one bit of comic news, and then I'll get into TV stuff. Um... I talked about Secret Empire kicking off soon. Uh, to coincide with that, in July uh, is also going to be something called Marvel Generations. Cool. Um, basically, what we're going to get is a series of one-shot comics based around a current character and a past version of that character. So, uh, like, for Wolverine, we're going to get X-23 and Wolverine back. Not Old Man Logan. Wolverine, the mainstream Marvel Wolverine. Cool. And then, like, uh, for Captain Marvel, we're going to get Carol Danvers, who's the current Captain Marvel. And this is big, because this guy's been dead for, like, ever. The original Captain Marvel, the alien Marvel. So, it's going to be a series of team-ups between past versions of the character. And this is the interesting thing. Uh, so, Bruce Banner's going to be back. Jean Grey is going to be back. The original Wolverine's going to be back from the dead here. And I thought, okay, this is going to be fun, but it's a series of one-shots. But apparently, it's not... Uh, the, the, uh, the effects of this are going to be long-lasting. So Bruce Banner, Jean Grey, and Wolverine will actually be sticking around once this is over. They'll okay. be back from the dead. And this is... this is I kind of wonder if this is kind of a course correction in terms of, you know, handing the reins of characters like Hulk and Captain America and Wolverine and all this stuff over to new people. 
because Tony Stark is going to be in the Invincible Iron Man one with Riri Williams. Okay. So I'm wondering if, because uh, you know, Marvel has apparently said that that they have, you know, haven't had great sales since some of the changeovers they made yeah. in the big titles. So I'm wondering if this is a giant chance to course correct for them, and because I think Hulk, Bruce Banner is going to be the new Hulk in the Hulk comic. I don't know what they're doing with Wolverine, because uh, X23. I've really been enjoying that, but so I wonder if this is a way to get back to kind of the status quo of Marvel, where Steve Rogers, it looks like, is going to be Captain America again, and not a Hydra agent, like, right, back to being right. Steve Rogers. That Hydra thing got everybody yeah. in a tantrum last year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I, I, which is, it's, on the one hand, it's like, I'm, I'm excited to see the return of, of, you know, Wolverine and Bruce Banner. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's kind of, I don't want to see Marvel just cave to pressure I mean, if I mean, if it's really drastically affecting sales, I don't like know if pressure kind of, or not, but it's sales. But you know, they they came out the other uh, yesterday or the day before with a well, it really wasn't this and it really wasn't that. But you know, that's just oh, yeah. damage control on the it's, damage yeah. control. So I I think you're right. I think they might be they might be just cave into pressure. I don't know why they wouldn't um, go back. You know, focus on X twenty three after the Logan movie. I thought we'd well, see a the ton thing. of stuff. Just on because that. Wolverine's coming back doesn't mean you have to stop. Having, I, they might go back to Wolverine having the Wolverine comic, and yep. then keep X twenty three having her own solo thing, which I'd be fine with. Right. Um, and the, here's the other weird thing: everything's going to go back to uh, their legacy numbering. Yeah. So Thor is going to jump from I think we're on nineteen or twenty at this point. So Thor's going to jump from twenty to seven hundred and like fifty seven. That's funny. Because they're going to go back and like re at like to, right back to which it. is what Action Comics and Detective Comics did in DC. I don't know why. I personally, I find that a little intimidating. If I was a new reader, being like, "Here's Thor, seven hundred and fifty-seven. Yeah, you got a lot of catch up to do." And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to get into this if it's you know what, what you know, seven hundred and fifty-seven. Well, my understanding has always been even on seven fifty-seven, it it seems to like it, you know, it started. The current story you might be reading, seven fifty-seven, started at seven fifty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's no, Marvel actually is funny, good about that. So, like, let's say um, issue 18 of Daredevil is the start of a new storyline. Yeah. It'll say 18 at the top, but then it'll say storyline such and such begins here, and it'll have oh, a, okay. a number one on it. So, so I like that. That's fine, but I, I don't know. I, I guess it's kind of a way to honor the history of the comic, but... It is. That's, that's it, interesting, but I, I'm looking forward to it. Alex Ross is going to be doing the covers, and Alex Ross is my favorite comic artist great, of all time. Great, This guy... He did Kingdom Come for DC, which is my favorite graphic novel of all time. He's doing the covers for Amazing Spider-Man right now in Marvel. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, this this guy, it's it's art. He, you could frame his work in museums. Well, I, I got to say that the, the woman who did that Captain America Hydra cover, uh, that's the first time I've seen her work that I know of. That I know of. That I know of. <laughs> And uh, that is, to me, I love that cover. I'm, I'm really excited. I want to see more of her stuff, too. So more great art coming in, too. What um, you, you, you think the Marvel, so you think it's going to be a reboot, then? Uh, not a reboot, more like a... Not a reboot, a, but like a, no, kind of getting kind back of like to a launching roots. on point, yeah, for, new, the for, for newer fans. and getting, okay. Yeah, kind of going back to that classic Marvel cool. feel with it. So I'm, I'm excited. That should be uh, this July is when Generation starts occurring. Uh, that's all I got for comic stuff, but I got my TV news already. Uh, Arrow and Flash are on a brief few-week hiatus because CW loves doing that now. Yeah. But Legends of Tomorrow did have their season two finale. And I was nervous because season finales can run the gambit of being a train wreck, of trying to get everything to you know fit into one storyline, or they can be you know fantastic. And luckily, what we got with Legends of Tomorrow was a fantastic fantastic episode which is one of your favorite shows right now. oh yeah too. it's my favorite of the three dc shows oh. and uh after last week's doom world where the legion of doom basically won they mm -hmm. got their reality that they wanted using the spear of destiny they destroyed the spear of destiny so they couldn't you know the legends couldn't use it to set everything mm -hmm. back the way it was so the legends decided the only way to fix things was to go back to when the legion got the spear the first time in the battle of the psalm in 1916 in world okay. war one now one of the big things. Love that World War. I love when they stick stuff in World War One. I'm yeah. a big fan of that. So I love when they go back and do that. One of the big things they were told by Rip in the first couple episodes of season one is, you can never go back and revisit events that you've already been to once. Ah, so okay. because otherwise that's a big catastrophic time risk. That's like a, that's called a Barry Allen. Yeah. That yeah. They, <laughs> they they well Barry actually after this has some catching up to do in breaking time. <laughs> So, they decide that 
they're, even though it's a terrible option, it's their only option. So they actually do wind up going back to the Battle of Somme in 1916, where their past versions of themselves are there. Which leads to some great hilarious things where they try to avoid themselves, yep. so they don't, you know, run into each other and break time. And, you know, th- which is great, because this show manages to blend the humor and the dark stuff very well. Arrow tends to be on the darker end of the spectrum, and Flash is more lighthearted. Yep. But this season, Flash has been getting a little darker, and it hasn't been translating as well. But but uh, Legends really d- does the high wire act with with the comedy and the dark stuff very well, and it never feels like oh boy this is a big tonal shift. Um, so we get a, a great thing with the Legends finally uh, unfortunately run into each other, so that we oh, have God. two teams of them, and it just it's great. The first thing the two riffs when they see each other see is like, oh God no, <laughs> <laughs> like no, knowing that they've just broken time in oh, some no. awful awful way. Um, but aside from, you know, the hilarious aspect of it, there was a lot of, there's, the big final battle ended with a few corpses on the ground, and... Because you had one last week. Last week, yeah, and I I won't say how, but it, 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 it's a great, Great. uh, battle sequence, and we get one of my favorite fight sequences in in the whole show, again. This, they, they did it in season one with that opening brawl in the first pilot episode, and they do it here, too, where there's just a big, spectacular fight between <laughs> two teams. And I really, I think, who's ever doing the, the choreography and stunt work for Legends really should give the rest of the show's notes, because Arrow's always been good for the, the martial arts fights of it, mm-hmm. but anytime in Arrow you start to throw in more than, like, three people, it just gets a little ridiculous. You know, in the fight scenes, like when I was just thinking about that when you said it, because a big fight scene, it, it can go, it can, it seems to be one of two things: really good or really bad. Like I loved the the uh, Captain America Civil War. The, the oh Civil yeah, War that, was that was great. Was a great fight scene. Yep. A whole bunch of, of of heroes duking it out. But one of the X Men didn't do a good fight scene. I can't remember which which movie it Probably was. Probably three. Three, five or three. <laughs> was that the one where they met in the woods and yes. you know, like really confused three. and people running all over the place? Like, what's going on here? Anytime you have to say something bad about an X Men movie, it's probably three. It's probably three. So, it, so we Sorry, just got an example Ratner. of both. And uh, um, it, it, so you you like this? This? Oh yeah, it was movie. great. It was just a giant, spectacular superpower brawl with everything thrown in for fun, and. It's some surprising directions they went in the finale. Yep. A couple, someone left the team. Uh, we had someone stay on, um, and it really was fun. And it set the stage for season three, I think, really well. Because after all this talk about how you can't ever go back to yep. something you've already done without there being some serious ramifications, which means they're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah it, well, they did it. But then it's like uh, the way things were wrapping up. I'm like, really? I mean, they seems kind of consequence free here that they just went back and met them their past selves and but then right there at the end it's like oh nope there yeah. was some big bad stuff yeah. that just happened because of this well that's what they did well with flash whenever barry would go back he'd mess with the timeline he'd come back everything seemed fine and or, uh, well in some cases everything seemed fine but other yeah. other episodes it would like he'd come back and have and ruined people's immediately lives immediately somebody was like really upset <laughs> killed cisco's brother yeah killed cisco's <laughs> brother there he goes yeah cisco's brother that was the one i was trying to think of and uh so he, he hasn't been able to live that one down. And, of course, what is he going to do? Try to go back and fix the timeline to fix the timeline that he fixed the wrong way, which is going to mess up another time. Oh, God. Yeah. But, no, so this was great. Legends uh, set finished Season 2 just like they started it, really strong. Yep. Uh, season They set up Season 3 really well. I cannot wait. I'm, I'm super bummed that the show is over for the season. I'm going to have to wait for months and months and months. Uh, but, you know, we still have Arrow and Flash for yeah. a few more months anyway. I think they fin- wrap up in May. Um, on TV news front, uh, Marvel's New Warriors is recently got, uh, I think, uh, bought to series, which brings Squirrel Girl yeah. to TV. Uh, if you don't know who Squirrel Girl is, it, she's basically exactly what the name implies. She is a girl who can <laughs> talk to squirrels and has squirrel-like powers. Isn't there, isn't there a big deal, like, she's also kind of like a, I hate to say it this way, positive positive thinker yeah she's a giant hippie basically yeah she's like oh you know you can do it and you can win super upbeat all the time and no it's it's fine because you know for every batman you need somebody on the opposite end of the spectrum uh but i think this is going to be ridiculous in the best way possible because you have stuff on marvel's netflix like daredevil and you know luke cage and iron fist which is this really dark gritty 
super violent, you know, brawl through Hell's Kitchen, New York. But, but then you have Supergirl on the other end. Yeah, well, is... that's <coughs> a whole other company. <laughs> so Marvel needs to get to that other spectrum of happy, you know... It's a whole other company, I yeah, know. I, but... So many of these these heroes are such brooding... Miser- well, they also... I blame Christopher Nolan. They all go 2005, Batman life. Begins, yeah. started it. They go through this brooding, miserable yeah. back. Which is hilarious, because Supergirl should be like that. Yeah. Because in the comics, at least in the New 52 comics anyway, Supergirl was this, like, scary Kryptonian warrior who, like, didn't have a day job and was just yeah. Supergirl all the time and, like, scarier than Clark. Even Wonder Woman, <clears throat> pardon me, even Wonder Woman coming out, she looks like she's not, she's not brooding, but she's... A little darker than little, yeah. She's darker than lighter. Yeah. But she's also in World War One, so you know that doesn't help. <laughs> Come on, guys, and friendship. Like, like bringing Bob someone back to London in nineteen fifteen or whatever. Yeah. Just looking uglier, sixteen. So anyway, uh, we got Marvel's new. Yeah, the so new Warriors fun. making a lot of yeah. noise. They're really excited, and a lot of new characters coming out. Bang! Here comes a whole new roster of characters. They got to keep it that, fresh. You know that. It's just getting more and more characters coming out, so we'll see who survives these things. And uh, also in TV news, oh, before I get to another, uh, Daredevil season three is supposed to start filming uh, this year, which I'm very excited about. Uh, I'm a little bummed. I think it's not going to release till 2018, but of the uh, all the Marvel Netflix shows right now, Daredevil is my favorite, easy. Uh, Charlie Cox plays a fantastic Matt Murdock. Um, everyone in that show is great. Foggy, Karen, uh, it's it's just it. It clicks in a way that's very true to the comics, but at the same time they're doing their own thing with it, and I, I can't wait for this thing to, to drop uh, because we have the Defenders coming out soon, which will you know tie all the four shows together, and then it looks like we're going to start over again with Daredevil and then probably Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and Iron Fist again. Cool. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, of all things, Mega Man is getting a TV show. It's going to be on Cartoon Network. Um, it's going to be apparently about a, a young kid who can actually turn into Mega Man, and he, you know he fights bad guys and saves the world. And uh, it's it, they're aiming it, you know, at the younger audience, like six to eleven year olds. But it's it's fun for like nostalgia. Their, yeah, that'll be their cartoon when they yeah. grow up. They'll all want Mega Man later on if it does well, you know. Um, that's, what else? Do, what else is coming out? Uh, you no, know, you know what I mean. Um, Invader Zim. Oh, uh, Invader yeah, Zim. Invader Zim is coming back to Nickelodeon. Now, yeah. Invader Zim is one of those weird cartoons, like, ah, real monsters from, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, where you, you, when you try to explain to somebody who's never seen it, they're <laughs> going to look at you cross-eyed because you're, it's it's weird. But it was great. It's an alien Zim who comes to Earth to try to learn about our culture and how he can best uh, conquer us. And his horrible ineptitude at doing so. He's <laughs> mystified by, like, basic human customs. Uh, he's terrible at fitting in. Yep. And the, But the running gag in the show is even though he's awful and totally obviously an alien, only one character on the show figures it out and knows he's an alien, and yep. nobody will believe him. Uh, and it's just, it was hilarious. The show was awesome. And I can't remember how long it ran for. I don't think it was terribly long. And then it got, you know, it got canceled, and Nickelodeon moved on to new programming and all this. Yeah. But... It seems now, like, uh, nostalgia is, is becoming, like, a, a big thing. Like, it's been, you know, 10, 15, some odd years, and it's like a lot of these older shows and older concepts are getting new life breathed into them to come back. Samurai Jack just came back, Invader Zim is coming back. there's a huge demand for it. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. We saw Samurai Jack got announced, and, and the social media went crazy, absolutely crazy. And then Invader Zim came out the other day, and that went absolutely crazy and trended right up the, the line. I mean, Twitter alone, it was top ten for it. It was hanging there for a long time. And so Invader Zim is all over the place. I'm looking at all the, the groups and stuff on Facebook and stuff. Invader Zim is really big stuff. So a lot of people grew up with Invader Zim and Samurai Jack. And uh, I'm trying to think of a few more cartoons that they can... They'll do it. They'll do it. They'll bring oh, back yeah. some other stuff and they'll they'll make them hot. But you're right. The, the, um, going back and pulling some of the old cartoons out of the late 90s. Yeah, it's the old adage, what's old is new again. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's, it's got a demand. So that's exciting to see. They're not just throwing it out there for the hell of it. Yeah. Uh, that's actually all I got for TV. I do have some uh, slight movie stuff, though. Uh, uh, looks like Seth Rogen is going to be helping to produce uh, an Invincible movie. Uh, Invincible is a comic series by Robert Kirkman, who people might know as the creator, or co-creator, I should say, of The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, Invincible is basically, I, I describe it as a really twisted take on Superman, in that there's, the main character is uh, finds out that he's an alien, 
he has superpowers and that his father is a superhero. Uh -huh. uh, I think Omni Man is the name. And he has developed his power or his father's powers and he becomes a superhero invincible. Cool. Except there's a catch. And I'm not going to give that away because it's probably going to be the big reveal of the movie, but it's it's definitely not what you what you expect. And Invincible is still going on. I think they're on like issue one thirty something at this mm -hmm. point. And it's it's Robert Kirkman's other big big thing besides um, Walking Dead. And I haven't read any of it. I've read bits and pieces of it here and there, but I haven't, I haven't followed the series for any real length of time. But it's got a real fan following, and it's uh, it's interesting. And it's it's it shows that Robert Kirkman isn't, you know, a one-trick pony and that The Walking Dead wasn't his big... He's got a lot of other stuff he can well, do. that's a heck of a trick. Yeah. I mean, my God, if you, yeah. you get the season... All the way up to season seven now. And it's still uh, eight. eight. Uh, eight. Well, yeah, they're eight. on seven right now. They, they just wrapped just, up they just seven. Wrapped but up, yeah, but eight's going to start soon. Um, you but, know, there's a little bit of bitching and moaning about seven it's, ending, but who cares? It's funny because Seth Rogen, of all people, is producing these, these a lot of comic stuff lately. I mean, he's obviously a big comic fan. He said mm -hmm. so himself. But uh, that show Preacher, he's executive producing on that too. Yep. It's on AMC, uh, so I, it's it's good to see that this there's other comic stuff besides you know you know Batman and Captain America yeah. and all that. It, yeah, no, the the more obscure fun stuff is getting a lot of love too these days, and it's nice to see. Uh, and the big one, uh, Star Wars Episode Nine is going to start filming apparently this July. Awesome. Uh, now, still no real word yet on how they're going to deal with the death of Carrie Fisher and, you know, moving forward. Um, but it looks like Disney is hoping for some quick turnaround on this because 8 finished filming, I think, r r a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like they're going to just pick right back up and wrap this trilogy up and start in July. And I am i can't wait. Cause yeah, and there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of rumors about obi-wan film coming back again too uh, people a lot of want that about it. Yeah. so bad and the the, the the insane thing is disney said right now they have no plans to do it but the fans are screaming for it. ian mcgregor said i'll do it i loved playing obi-wan I'd, I'd do it again in a heartbeat that's funny um i i, I the next anthology movie is going to be the han solo one obviously yep. after episode eight and then after that, there's really no word on what the next anthology film is going to be. So I say, why not do an Obi Wan mm -hmm. movie? You've got you've got the main character saying he'll come back for it. The fans want to see it. I think they're being cautious. Although the last two movies were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, but they're being a little Rogue cautious. One they just want to make sure. Yep. Uh, uh, Star Wars Episode Seven. Make sure Han Solo works. Make sure this other thing works, and then they'll they're off to another two or three movies. I think they're doing two or three at a time just to see how it goes. But well, that's the nice thing about this is that. When you have a something like the main trilogy of Star Wars, and then you have these anthology films, yeah, it's not like you're running that crew ragged into the ground because you have somebody working on the main film, and then you got this whole other separate thing with the anthology mm -hmm. film. So it's not like you know Daisy Ridley and John Boyega and uh, Oscar Isaacs are doing yeah. movie A, then movie B, then movie A, then movie B, and they're you know they're getting run ragged and like into the ground. Right. You've got this whole thing over here and this separate thing over here that can run parallel and not you know really push anyone to the point of breaking. So I think that's a smart thing Disney's doing, is not doing, like, episode 7 in 2018 and then episode 8 in 2019. You know, they're not going to do that yearly, because that would be madness. But I, I say, why not do an Obi-Wan movie? Or I, the other one I want to see is Old Republic, because I love... A nice lot of calls game. for Old Republic. I put out some notes on that on social media and got a lot of responses. A lot of people would like to Old see the, Old Republic. The Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 were such fantastic games, yeah. and they really opened up the, the lore of Star Wars it in a huge way. All new characters, all oh, new yeah. ships, all new everything. Massive battles. Good. Armies Massive. of Jedi and Sith. Yeah, and tons of intrigue. Yeah, the Sith were an empire intrigue? at that point. There was not the rule of two. It would almost, you know, you could go pretty much anywhere you want with that because you could almost have a situation where you had very high tech stuff that all got wiped out in these wars, and then they're pretty much, you know, because even in, it's interesting in the Star Wars movies, like the the uh, the Empire or the the First Order have really high tech stuff, but the Rebels are pretty much, you know, yeah, stuck on the junk you know, staples and tape and you know, twine. Well, it would actually kind together. of be the other way around because at this point, the the Republic was the big yeah, spreading in, force. In the old days, yeah. it would be those guys that, you know, the, yeah. Rab, the Republic would have the powerhouse weapons. So it would, it would be interesting to see how they, they do that moving. I think it would be a huge deal. But of course, you know, we're backed up. I think we're backed up to what, 20, about 2028 right now with Star Wars movies and spinoffs and, and so. So if you, I would expect Old, Re Old Republic to come out maybe, 
maybe five years from now if, the, if you have any real noise Ooh. about it. And I don't know why they don't do it well. They didn't do so well with the animated apparently, so which is a darn shame. What? I mean, they did, but they they didn't they don't do as well with animated as they do with the major films. Oh yeah, which is a darn shame because well, I'd like no to see some more you couldn't do a live action show. Yeah, and the reason I'm mentioning that is because there's been a little bit of discussion with with um I found some some really cool Terminator and Predator fan film and some other stuff that the fans have been doing and they're short but they're really good and and it kind of makes you think like okay we're sitting around waiting for Terminator we're waiting for Predator we're waiting for this we're waiting for the aliens and yet the fans are kicking out these really cool little things and and there's no reason I wish they'd let the fans I almost wish like somebody would say okay we're doing a I know I'm taking this way out the left field on this but this is kind (laughs) of cool we're doing a we're doing an all call right now for Knights of the Old Republic all fans turn in what you got you know let's see what you got and yeah. we'll put it together let's have some fun with this and I think it would be a huge deal in the theaters but that's just me just throwing an idea out there what do you think of that leave it in the comments so Tom says Star Wars Episode 9 is now filming yay well July it'll start filming oh well I wish it was filming I would get it sooner get yeah. it sooner I must sooner. have the Star Wars <laughs> um, that's all I got for movie stuff the last bit I have is uh, uh, Microsoft recently just revealed the technical specifications for the Xbox Scorpio, ah. which is I got. It's not really a new system. It's more like uh, an upgrade on the Xbox One. Um, it's gonna run. I think they said it's got a thirty percent more powerful CPU than the Xbox One. Okay. So it's a, a pretty significant upgrade. Uh, the big deal is I think unlike the PS4 Pro, which only has a noticeable uptick in graphics if you're playing on a 4K TV, mm-hmm. which is like insanely expensive at this yeah. point. Uh, the Xbox uh, Scorpio will actually, uh, you'll see that performance upgrade if you just got a regular HD TV, which most people have at this point. Right. So it's nice in the sense of it's not, you know, 4K exclusive. So in addition to not only buying a $500 new console, you'd have to buy a, you know, yeah. $1,000 new TV. People to, wondered how much is the Xbox Scorpio going to see, gonna cost. Yeah, to even see. You know, but the rumor is about now about 500 500 And okay. so, you know, you don't need a 4K TV to, like, notice an improvement in graphics. Um, I'm, I'm a little bummed, honestly, that this whole thing is happening because the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, they're not that old at this point. I think they came out in 2013, 20, maybe mm. late 2012. But uh, it's... It's, we're we're four years in here. Yeah. Do we really need new consoles oh, yeah. at this that's point? They're making I mean, their money. Yeah, they make yeah. their money. But... What, look at the Switch. Um, the Switch is a brand new. Well, console. that's a different thing. This, the Switch was it's almost portable. kind of a necessary it, thing because the Wii U was just not performing for yeah. them. They needed something new. But I I don't know. We'll see. I I'm I I'm probably not going to get the Xbox Scorpio at least not for a long time because I I'm happy with my Xbox One. How's Microsoft's track record on making it available on on? on opening day. Like, uh, that's the funny thing. Uh, usually they're pretty good about it because when I got my PS4 on launch day, that was there was no big kerfuffle. Okay. I mean, there there will definitely be some people who can't get it launch day, mm-hmm. but the Switch was like insanity. That was like... Two, it seems the Switch seems to have, have ironed itself out pretty fast though. Two million, like yeah. going up. And the, but like, the next wave is launching soon. Okay. Because has everybody got their Switch who wants one now? Uh, I'm still waiting on mine, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, yeah. I thought I, I thought everybody had one. I didn't no. realize you were still waiting on that, too. I, I, yeah. I know someone else we had. Chetty just got his. A couple, <laughs> yeah, a couple people we know just got their, their stuff. Yeah. And uh, so I thought that everybody was getting them really, really fast. But No, you know, but yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. It's, it's infuriating a little bit because at this stage of the game, you'd think that they'd say, okay, you know, we're going to put this out. Let's make $2 million right off the top. They did. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's the right. insane that's right. thing. The demand is they twenty million. I forget. Two million. I'm, I'm not thinking. There, there's probably yeah. there's probably a fifty million demand. It's funny you it said too, because that that's how much was initially Jeez. shipped was two yeah. million, and oh, they're gosh. just gone. Yeah. So yeah, Nintendo's got the second wave coming out soon. Yeah, um, I I forget. I forget. I'm thinking. Yeah. You know, United States, and I'm forgetting there's you know eighty other countries all waiting in line for this stuff, including China and Japan. The Switch. Alone. The Switch has actually outsold the uh, the PS4 on launch day in mm, Japan. Yeah. So this thing, the demand for this thing was huge. Yeah, Japan's almost like you have to have one. <laughs> yeah, you're, <laughs> you're like not obligated allowed not to have one as a citizen. You have to own a. Uh, it's it's funny, but you, you it's almost not a joke in that PlayStation and Nintendo stuff sell pretty well over there because yep. they're both Japanese based companies Xbox does not sell very, nearly as well over there Jeez. 
And uh, I don't know if that's, I don't know if it's, what is it, the, the, the technology or the operating system? You know, what is it that's going on with that? Because Microsoft seems to have gotten their acting. Boy, I'm going to knock, knock on wood here. Yeah. But I'm looking at, you know, and just going a quick side note, I, I want to mention that if anybody else notices this, let us know. I'm using, you know, like most people now, Windows 10, and I'm seeing it's it's not crashing. And it's very exciting. And again, knock on wood, because I went through all the operating systems from 3 X all the way up to ten, and they were, you know, they had their ups and downs, and and I think XP I like was the only good one. Vista, oh no, that was it. XP, XP was the had, one, a, but it had three or four service packs that were holding it together, and it yeah. still crashed. But this thing is like I hammer on this thing, and it doesn't crash. So I'm like really excited that they seem to have finally got their act together on it, and I don't have any major complaints like I thought I would. So I was kind of surprised to hear the Xbox isn't, you know, is is big a deal even overseas. So. Anyway, that whole big deal aside, what have we got next? Uh, that's it for me, actually. I think, yeah. I think we're done. We're going to do a short one today and uh, heavy on Marvel and DC, so we'll call this the Marvel DC episode. But if you if you want to support us, we are all over the place. We are on all social media, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Minds.com, Facebook. Um, of course, we got the YouTube channel and the website, and uh, we got links to all of them. Find us on click iTunes. Click on it. And, <laughs> oh, iTunes. Thank you. Yep. iTunes as well. Good job, Tom. And um, we're all over the place. We can use some likes. Uh, please subscribe. Take a look. And if you do any any purchases, if you go to the website, and uh, even if you've got your ad blocker on, just turn it off for a minute. We don't hammer you with anything. We just got a couple Amazon ads up there. If you click on the link for the Amazon ad before you do your purchases over at Amazon, we get a few pennies. And we always push it because it doesn't cost you a thing. It takes it's an extra click. That's all you got. It all the expenditure you have to put out. All the effort. There's nothing to it, and it helps us stay alive with Amazon, and Amazon's happy because they see that they're getting a little bit of traffic through our site, and they're delighted, and we get the support, so it's, it's nice. And um, in the meantime, we will be coming back next week with a whole bunch of new new talk, a lot of comic books, different movies, horror, sci-fi, I think some fantasy we got. Tom eventually is going to get to uh, Power, Power Rangers. Rangers. <laughs> Hopefully I'll go this weekend while I'm out of town. We'll see. Okay, so... <laughs> In the meantime, uh, have a great week. Keep the geek. Bye.